I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise his name. I come to praise his name. I come to clap my hands. I come to... Okay. What's my stuffing? What is up, y'all? I know y'all thought I wouldn't even pay attention and I was accidentally recording myself. But no, I'm here talking to you dudes and dudettes. How's it hanging, buddies? It's Friday. If you can't tell, I'm excited because life is lifing. And that's what it's all about. Um, I have no power to my stupid thing. But what's up with you guys? How are you living? How is your week going? Mine is going like it always goes, but it's almost over, children. It is almost over, and that is is exciting for myself. Um, there was a lot of news. The most interesting news that I saw today was the Cash App dude. He got stabbed by a fellow techie. Um, as far as my day went, first, let me say that. My day was a blur. Um, I got minimal rest per usual. Uh, My mother-in-law, and I got, shout out to my mother-in-law. The lady, she's a real MVP. I actually really like her and it's scary because how does that ever happen? But she came over today to help my husband lay some mulch. And I'm not trying to be stereotypical, but she is a Mexican. And that, and that, and I ain't saying nothing to say nothing, but I felt some kind of way having this lady do yard work in my house, and I know that's racist, right? So I tried to give her some money too, and she didn't want it. But now, shout out to, and these are jokes, but shout out to my mother-in-law. She's such a sweet gal. Like, love her lots. Um, but it is scary having a mother-in-law. You like. I've had a, I've been married before. I've had a good mother-in-law in the past, but it's always good when you get one, a good one. Shout out to her. Um, appeal court refuses to, to decide if Trump can be shielded from his rape accusers defamation uh, case. The Supreme Court is allowing the $6 billion student loan debt settlement so there's a settlement so you guys could be in some relief I don't know let's see if this will play because I don't want to read it all and I, of course there's no video so a settlement will allow thousands of student loan debts to be cancelled and will go into effect after the Supreme Court on Thursday declined to block it uh, so you guys could be getting your money be on the lookout you might actually I mean, by oh, Biden might actually come through. Trump spent eight hours at the New York AG's office for his deposition in his business fraud lawsuit. A uh, Florida le- legislator passes a six-week abortion ban. Uh, the GOP flocked to the NRA convention. Not shocking. I just got too much going on here right now, y'all. But I'm going to get it together. I got too many plugs plugging in the wrong place. Um, Let's see what else we got. Romance novel cover model who dragged Capitol officer on January 6th is sentenced to three years in prison. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Model by day, uh, capital boycotter by night. They keep having so much compassion for this bank shooter. They said that he was seeing a counselor for depression and CTE. I can guarantee you that most of us have CTE. Just saying. But for some reason, a lot of people are compassionate about this dude that decided to go shoot up some people. 
Um, Delta predicts record summer travel season as FAA warns of another spike in delays. I am very afraid to fly because I just don't even want to go there. Uh, Jamie Foxx was hospitalized after a medical emergency rep says. So supposedly the word on the street is that he had a stroke. So speedy recovery to old Jamie. So let me, I wanted to read this cash app story. I don't know why it's not popping up. All the repetitive news and Kylie Jenner's dating another guy, a white guy. Um, Brittany Griner is fighting to bring home America's held captive in Russia. A man in Texas gets 70 years for spinning at cops. Uh, I'm just kind of flying through these things. Because I'm really trying to go get this cash up story. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is filling potholes. Drake Bell was missing, but he's not missing anymore. And if you don't know who Drake Bell is, he was on uh, Nickelodeon. He's one of the Nick kids. All right, finally. Let's see if there's a video for this. It's probably not, and it's going to make me read it. So the Cash Up founder, Bob Lee, fellow tech execs, rest for Hitley's murder. Um, the San Francisco DA office has charged... Mommen, Mommen, M O M M O M E N I, with murder with the allegation that he used a deadly weapon. He faces 26 years to life in prison if convicted. San Francisco Police Department confirmed that Bob Lee and Nima Mamani knew each other. Mamani will be arraigned tomorrow, the DA office said. They are filing a motion to detain him without bail due to severe public safety risk. Cops arrested him for stabbing him. The arrest went down Thursday near San Francisco where Lee was stabbed. This is according to Mission Local, which broke the story. The ally reported the man arrested is... I'm tired of seeing his name. Uh, so I don't know what is going on with that. Uh, he said that they were driving together in the early hours of April 4th. A car was registered to the suspect and in some sort of confrontation ensued in a car and continued after Lee left the vehicle. Lee was stabbed at least twice. And the Alice says the knife has now been recovered near an area where Lee was fatally wounded. Cuff said this was not a robbery or a random crime. So... I don't know what kind of argument they got into that he stabbed him in the car. I do know that car arguments are fierce. Like, do not fight in the car. Because, yeah, it's going to lead to some fisticuffs. Or, like, something about car fights. But I'm curious to see what is it that, you know, these two are fighting about. A 21-year-old National Guardsman could have had access to high-level classified documents, and he could have given these documents to the Ukraine, so he got arrested for that. Let's see what else we got going on. So the guy's name is Jack TX Sarah, and he leaked U.S. intelligence documents to his some group called Thug Shakers. It's a central Discord group. Um, he was arrested after allegedly allegedly leaking dozens of sensitive U.S. intelligence documents. He was taken into custody on Thursday following the disclosure of the sensitive documents. What is the National Guard? I mean, why are they giving? And this is just 
I did so on my behalf because I'm a veteran and National Guard. I thought all they did was fill sandbags, but here they are with access to sensitive documents. Interesting. Yeah. Britney Spears. Her dancing around is odd. People are saying there's this recent video of her dancing around and the flowers appear and then they disappear in the background and they keep someone keeps releasing these edited videos of her. I, the whole thing is creepy and Brit, Brit, what's her name? Brittany. She seems not well, but you guys wanted her free so bad. The girl does not seem well. Their MIT scientists discover a remarkable way to reverse Alzheimer's disease. So I'm waiting on this, I'm waiting to see this actually happen. A controversial mayor caught dancing nearly naked at a nightclub faces a probe, pun intended. Political redefined naked leadership after he was spotted dancing while nearly nude at the nightclub as seen in a wild blowing a video blowing up online. He must have been on had the, the ecstasy and everything. Uh, he is the mayor of what? Who's in the mayor of? Oh, he's Colombian. Well, that seems normal over there. Maybe. I mean, you guys seem like you like to party in Colombia. Just from my observation. With all the carny balls and the stuff like that. But yeah, I have some story times for you guys. So don't worry your pretty little heads. But they are around. Let's see what else I got though. The mom of the six-year-old boy who shot his teacher turns himself in, turns herself in. They're going to charge her for felony neglect. Um, she was only 26. She's charged with neglect and recklessly leaving a firearm as so as to endanger a child. She was released on a $5,000 bond. She faces up to seven years in prison. You know, this is sad, but honestly, I think we do have to hold parents accountable for this kind of stuff. I mean, if you're going to have guns and stuff, when you have kids around, you have to lock them up. You just have to. Yeah. Other than that, guys, that is kind of all the news that we can stomach, right? Um, like I said, the most interesting, which was not shocking that somebody that the cash up owner knew his attacker because yeah, they're out at 645 in the morning. And if you just watch that video of him stumbling back, he didn't seem, I don't know. It just is it, the whole video kind of seemed off. Uh, so let's get into some Reddit stuff. M- male gynecologist of Reddit. Why did you pursue your job? This is interesting because I did wonder why do men are interested in women's anatomy without it being sexual? Uh, One guy said several reasons, but maybe the most important and formative experience for me was after med school. I was living in the Horn of Africa for a couple of years. I witnessed some soul crushing things like obstetric fistulae, young women with advanced cervical cancer that could have been prevented easily, victims of sexual violence, complicated and traumatic deliveries. To put in mind, women's health leaves much to be desired in a global context. So he cared about women's health. Interesting. New moms. It would be fun. I mean, yeah, delivering a baby has to be cool. I I can tell you, if I were to be a doctor, it would probably be way more 
exciting to deliver a baby than anything than maybe you know giving a heart transplant but you have to be like really good at that stuff right what is something legal in the u.s that shouldn't be um legal in the u.s that shouldn't be let me let me say what it before i look at these comments what do i think I think that people should not be allowed to talk uh, before 9 p.m. No, I think that like if you're at the checkout, just get your groceries and go. And I feel like we should not have to do small talk, period. That's why I love face masks. But let's go. HOA foreclosure. Yeah, that is a joke. HOA is a joke. Um, let's see. Free trials that require credit card information. Yes. Corporations and businesses buying all the housing. These are good. You guys really thought about this. Politicians owning stock. Insurance companies charging fortunes for medications that don't have to cost that much just so they can get their cut. You guys are good. All I was talking about was talking. Child marriages. I know that there's a Missouri senator fighting for 12-year-olds to be able to get married. Hmm. A lot of people are saying child marriages and things like that. Let's see what the... It's been a while since I've been in these Reddits, so let's see anything new exciting is happening single mother you're dating essentially says I'll always prioritize my child before our relationship what's your reaction as long as she doesn't have any problem with me doing the exact same thing with my child I'm fine with this I don't have a problem with prioritizing children I have a problem with double standard I've been there and it didn't last Um, If you're dating a single mother while dating, I would hope so that you would respect that. Um, You know, until you guys come together as one in a marriage. But yeah, if she's a single mother and you're dating, you should want her to put her kid first. I went out with a woman once who said that and it ended in dinner. She ordered to go for her children because she said, I feel guilty eating out and not getting my kids something too. I was like, cool, separate checks, please the look on her face i mean if she did order out for her kids it should be fine but i mean i i wouldn't expect the man to pay for it someone said that that's a huge positive in my book because i don't feel like they care about the kids good that's what she should say why the hell should she probably charge you over her child I'd expect nothing less, which is why I wouldn't date her in the first place. There you go. I mean, because at the end of the day, if if someone is a single parent, like, they're doing it by themselves, so they kind of have to. So if that is a task you don't want to take on, don't do it, my man. If men were less horny, what would happen? This is an interesting question. We get more done day to day. Um, the Kleenex industry would collapse. <laughs> Social media would implode. World peace, co fusion, perfected jetpacks. Of course, all the cool things we've done in the name of impressing women would stop. True. Vagina pics instead of D pics. You think the women would turn into the horny ones? Birth rates would plummet further. Hmm. Some of these are interesting, but I'm not going to read all these. Let's go and see what the women are talking about.
What are your thoughts on withdrawing sexual consent that you've originally agreed to? Um, how, what context is this? Like, are we laying in the bed naked or are we saying earlier that day, I can't wait to hook up with you. And then you piss me off and then I'm not going to have sex with you because that's a big difference. If we land in the bed naked and we're in the act, I would hope you don't piss me off. That could still be possible. Anytime you're entitled to be, to say no, let's be clear, but it would kind of be really messed up if y'all were ready to do the do and then something crazy happened and it didn't go down. But let's see what people are saying. Yes, you can always change your mind. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That was rape. Um, so the person were saying that I don't know what the original post said. Consent can always be revoked. Not only does sexual consent need to be ongoing and therefore you can change your mind at any point during sex, but also your old for impressing you into sex and sexual assault. So I guess someone was pressured into sex. But yeah, you don't owe anyone sex. So you can definitely change your mind. And and things can, can happen. I mean, you know, it's the context of a story for me. But yes, men have to know that a woman can always withdraw. Or a man could withdraw their consent. What, what's, what's the worst case of male entitlement you've seen? Just the list is long. Somebody said, I have a long list living in an Islamic nation. Wow. When I was dating a guy who didn't like how I gave him oral, he sent me a blowjob tutorial from Pornhub. Okay, the gesture was a little tasteless, but I did learn something new. When I asked for my turn to receive oral, he said he wouldn't go down on me. I asked why not, and he replied he only eats out his girlfriends. Oh, okay. Suddenly, I decided my boundary that was that I only give head to my boyfriends. He actually had the audacity to get upset. This is the wildest story. Um, had a guy tell me that computer science and gaming in general should be reserved for men because men think more logically it's worth noting that I was doing my master's degree in computer science his work had nothing to do with the with computer science or tech had a guy get mad because he cat called me and I didn't respond the way he wanted I wasn't even rude I just said don't you think you're, or you are a bit too old for this? For context, I was 16 and he was around 40. He just started screaming from his car about how I was a stuck up B. I think a, like cat calling is something I don't like. And if you cat call me, I will ignore you. Some men have gotten funny when we when they have bought me drinks and I've not been interested. Yeah, I mean, if a, if you buy a woman a drink and she still doesn't engage you it's kind of like your loss right that's why you just don't buy a woman a drink it's 50 50 chance that it's not gonna work a guy friend that happens to be in a relationship with someone else gets jealous when i speak to other men that blowjob story was really funny my ex forbid me from wearing heels because he didn't like how tall they made me compared to him. The worst part is when he forbid me from wearing them, I actually listened and felt sorry for him. He felt entitled to pick out what I could and couldn't wear, but the shoe thing was definitely the worst. Another friend at the time was stereotypical nice guy before I even knew what that was. After months of pestering for a date while I had a boyfriend, he eventually ended up giving me some effed up trauma. I don't owe you a date. I can wear whatever I want. I don't even know what I was thinking. I'm glad I'm not a doormat. So I guess mine would be like, I've had male friends that I tried to do the whole we're friend thing. And then when they try to date me and I don't date them, then they don't want to be my friends anymore. So I feel like, yeah, that's entitlement in a way because it's like, you were always a friend and you were always going to be in a friend zone and so don't be friends with me and expect to come out of the friend zone and that's why yes it is hard to be friends with some men because I mean even though I can say a thousand times 
you're going to stay in the friend zone because I'll break your heart. Now I don't have to worry about these things because I'm married, but you know, some people get mad because you won't date them. Like, and you're entitled to just be friends, especially since that's how the relationship always started out. Just the FYI Z. All right, y'all, let's get into the story time. Let's see what we got. This case is extremely disturbing and the worst kind of horrible. So please be aware of that before we get into the details. Zaria Burgess was 15 years old, living in North Carolina. Her parents were Joshua Burgess and Akeisha Pope. Josh and Akeisha met in high school and they were still teenagers when they ended up having Zaria. They would end up breaking up. Akeisha ended up having another child with someone else, but she and Josh remained amicable in co-parenting Zaria. Joshua seemed like a really good doting father. He was always posting pictures of Zaria on Facebook, and he seemed to really enjoy being a dad. But he had previously had some issues with illicit substances and seemed to have kind of a hard time keeping a job. One job that he did seem to have a lot of luck with was truck driving, and Zaria would end up going on some of these trucking trips with him. Now, as Zaria would grow into a teenager, she started telling her friends that her dad seemed to be having some anger issues, and she really didn't like staying at his house anymore. Like, he would yell at her and lash out at her and seem to just always be on edge around her. One weekend in August of 2018, Zaria was scheduled to go to her dad's. She really did not want to go this weekend, but her mom, Akeisha, was busy with her church dance team, which she was a very active participant in. Zaria would try to go to a friend's house, but this friend's family had plans, so Zaria was stuck with no choice but to go to her dad's house. On the morning of August 18th, 2018, Joshua Burgess walked into a local police station where he told the lady behind the front desk he was there to turn himself in for murder. Now, the front desk lady thought that he meant like he had a warrant out, so she starts looking in the computer, and he's like, no, you won't find me in there. I just killed someone. So the other officers hear this, and they're like, what the fuck? So they go to question this guy, and he tells them, yeah, I just killed my daughter. Here's the address. So they actually ended up having to bring in a special investigation team to deal with this crime scene, and they said that it was one of the most heinous crimes that they had ever witnessed. Zaria was in the living room, deceased. She was nude. Her hands and feet were both handcuffed behind her back. And she was posed in such a way that she was facing the front door. She had been stabbed multiple times all over her body, but the fatal blow was an obvious slash in her neck. It was also clearly apparent that she had been brutally essayed during this ordeal that led to her death. Joshua was charged with first-degree murder and a ton of other crimes regarding the essay of a minor. Now, you're all probably wondering what the motive was behind this. Well, Joshua had ended up making a full confession to police, and he said that this had all been planned. He said that he was in love with Zaria, and that because she was getting older and starting to develop into a young woman, He wanted to get her before anyone else could have her. He had taken her to breakfast that Saturday morning, and this is when he went over all of the sick and disgusting things in his head that he had planned on doing to her. He ended up spending almost 24 hours essaying and torturing Zaria, his own daughter, by the way. Like, keep in mind, this is his own daughter that he did all of this to. And he told officers that it was the best weekend of his life and that he enjoyed everything he did to her. He had initially stabbed her and suffocated her, and at this point he thought that she was dead. But Zaria was only unconscious, and she did end up getting up and at one point tried to make a run for the front door. This is when he was able to grab her before she reached the front door, and he slit her throat which was what would end up killing her. He had initially planned on ending his own life by having a sort of shootout with the police, but at the last second, he pussed out and decided to just turn himself in because he was afraid of dying. Joshua Burgess would end up receiving the death penalty for the murder of his own daughter, 
plus 75 years for the other crimes. So he will never get out of prison. That is a story is so freaking heartbreaking. And I can tell you right now that if my kid told me they didn't want to go to their parents' house, they not going like he just gonna have to take me to court or something and and they even still they might not go I just probably have to keep doing time in jail because I never understand and I always try to understand why these parents if their kids say I don't want to go to my parents house they still do it out of fear of the judge or whatever but I just we just gonna move and you just never gonna see us again like I'm just I can't I just I wouldn't be able to live with myself, especially knowing that my kid didn't want to go over there. On March 31st, I was sexually assaulted by an Uber customer. I picked up the order and took it to this customer's house at 1234 West Ohio, Chicago, Illinois. Unit three. His name is Maximo something. I'm trying to get it all together. And uh, Uber doesn't care. The Chicago police don't care. Copa doesn't care. A detective literally told me if I was a woman, things would be different. sorry to you sir that women report things also and they don't care just FYI Jordan and Zania are still learning each other (laughs) their first date was hiking up the DeSoto Falls where a lot of people fall in love we took pictures and kind of just got our first kiss up there it was it was a moment in the midst of the moment, a storm came through and they started to slip. Without hesitation, it was just go get her, like out of instinct. Jordan and Zania both fell from the top of the falls. Seriously injured, they had to hike 30 minutes to get help. I kept telling her, just repeat after me, you're brave, you're strong, you got this. By the time they got to the ER, Zania was in critical condition. Jordan fractured both shoulder blades. Her facial injuries were extensive. I felt ugly, so I didn't like what I looked like anymore. So I honestly didn't think he would like me. But the first time Jordan saw Zania after the fall, he asked her to be his girlfriend. You guys, let me go, how did I look? You look beautiful. Like, I... Like, just seeing her that way, like, it built built a bond that probably won't ever be broken. While Zania improved, Jordan's mom says he kept getting worse. He had lost a lot of weight, and it was just falling off of him. Um, He wasn't able to eat a lot, didn't have much of an appetite. Doctors thought he may have ruptured his esophagus in the fall. The way I felt on my shoulders, they thought I crushed it. The news was much worse. The call came in, they diagnosed it as stomach cancer. Um, Jordan says it took falling to catch it. It's your baby. Of course it's hard. I can't help him. All I can do is be there and take care of everything else, but I can't take it from him. So I just have to watch, and that is hard. And Zania is there too, just taking it step by step. I remember Jordan just saying, you're strong, you're brave, and you got this. And like that really stuck with me. That message is now their mantra. She does say it all the time that I'm strong and like, you got this, this is your fight. For Jordan, that fight is just beginning. He has surgery to remove his stomach this month. Doctors will attach his esophagus to his small intestine, and then he'll be on a feeding tube for the next six to eight months. But Zania says he'll do it with her at his side. So that is some first date. That's when you say is love blind. Because the way you hold somebody down after that on the first date, that's pretty phenomenal. I don't know if I could do it, but they did it. Um, where did she, did she fall asleep in her bedroom? She came and got up on the couch with me. Mm-hmm. You guys took a nap? 
We oh barely, God. we barely fell asleep. By the time I was actually, you know, like dozing off, Miss Vernon was knocking at the door. Okay, and at that time you put her in her bedroom or left her on the couch? At this time, I had picked her up because she was laying with me on the couch. I'm not sure if she was on top of me or beside me at that point. Yeah. Um, I picked her up and I laid her on the couch and I opened the door and I came to get her off the couch and I put her in her bed. Okay. Um, did you, did she eat or drink anything? My boyfriend told me he made fish sticks and I want to say like french fries or something. Okay. No, I'm, that was earlier in the day when you guys got back. Did she mm -hmm. eat or drink anything? No, she didn't eat or drink anything. She had left her, he said she, she didn't want her sippy cup before they walked out the door to come and get me. So he left the sippy cup there. Which when sippy got, cup was that? To my knowledge, it should have been the pink one. The pink sippy cup? Mm -hmm. And where was that located? I'm not even sure, I wasn't there. Did he have that or did she have it? It was left. It was left there. She didn't want it on the way out the door. Okay. When you say on the way out the door, you mean? When they left to come and get come me from get. school. Okay. When you came back, did she, that pink sippy cup, do you remember I where it was? I didn't even see the sippy cup. Did you give her the sippy, sippy cup at all? I didn't see the sippy cup. Okay. Do you remember it being in her, in her bedroom, that sippy cup? I think I might have found the sippy cup on the way to, uh, I'm not sure. I just remember, I believe, putting the sippy cup in her bed with her. Okay. Did you put anything in the sippy cup? No, there was a red liquid in it, and I know we had huggies. Yeah, I remember time. seeing some huggies in there. To, my, to be more specific, happy drink huggies. Is that what they're called? Mm hmm Okay, um, did you, when you were living, let me, I'm just going to show you the, the picture, this is, um, is this the same sippy cup you're thinking of? Mm -hmm. Now, did you have put liquid in there, um, earlier in the day? Yes. You did? Mm hmm Okay. Was that the same sippy cup that you put the liquid in? It was before you went to school, when you got home from school, or? I put a, a different juice drink in there, and she had a complete fit, and she didn't drink it. Okay. So, how the red liquid got in, he changed her sippy cup when he fed her. Okay. He said she drank a little bit and threw it. Okay. Out of that sippy cup? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... When you lived at that address, um, did you get anything delivered in the mail from overseas? I had just ordered her entire room from Walmart. I don't know if that came from overseas or not. Well, Walmart wouldn't. I'm saying, like, did you order anything that maybe, that, you know, might not have, that might have been out of the ordinary, any type of anything from a different country? No, my mother purchased the baby gate that was in her room. Okay. I believe she purchased that from Walmart also. Okay. There would be no reason like you would get any packages say from China or from Japan or anything like that? Like directly from them? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. But to your knowledge, you... I ordered everything from Walmart. Okay, um, so just to be clear, the, the, the stuff that was in that sippy cup, you, you did put in or you did not? I did not. Okay. Okay. Do you have any idea, um, well, let me, I'm just going to cut, I'm just going to be blunt to you. Your child died from fentanyl poisoning. 
So why did CYF tell me hypoxic cardiac arrest? They were, there weren't lab results then. So I'm going to explain this to you, okay? So that story, another terrible disto- story, this lady or boyfriend or whoever was giving their child fentanyl to go to sleep, huggies as she called it, and yeah, and she was just going to really play dumb to the end. I'm going to give you guys a PSA for all you female corrections officers, how these guys run game on y'all. What? Is it more so the, the guards hollering at the inmates or the inmates just get they got that game and spin at the guards? Say, man, listen, the objective of the game is if you see a lame bitch come through the... You hear me? Yeah. That bitch don't got no game. That bitch from the country. Facts. Them country hoes, man, they ain't never been around no city slickers, man. Facts, yeah, the They ain't never been around a nigga with no stocky body. Facts. They ain't never been around a nigga that goddamn he'll sit in front of you, serve some game to you, then he'll start crying. Yo. Yo. Man, say, man. Yo. Them niggas ain't never been around this type of shit, man. Yo. Yo. You hear me? Nah, hey, 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 no, no, that's fast. Hey, no, wait, that, that's fast because, you know, people, yeah, prisons are normally in small towns. In country towns. Country towns. And they work in that in them little towns. Shit. So when them city niggas come through, like, God damn. Man, these hoes fresh out of high school, man. <laughs> Yo. You got these hoes coming fresh out of high school, going inside the motherfucking penitentiary around niggas that exercise games 24-7. <laughs> nigga. Nigga. Nigga, and guess what? Them hoes broke. <laughs> what? No pitching, no pitching. Man, them hoes been looking at uh, them videos of them niggas walking around with that money, that jewelry, and them hoes ain't never seen that in real life. Yeah, thanks. When they go to the penitentiary, guess what a nigga do? Say, what's up with it, man? You know, nigga pull out the photo album. <laughs> there it is. Nigga. Ooh, you had that car? Yeah, yeah, that, that's when I had to, that's when I had to be in right there, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, now I had the lag right here. Yeah, yeah. nigga ain't had a motherfucking <laughs> time. Nigga, 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 nigga that's your partner shit. God you hear me? But the bitch don't know. Yeah, yeah. The bitch don't know what's happening, man, so guess what? That bitch mesmerized. Yeah, yeah. She. Hey. <laughs> Not the penitentiary. Them little prisoners got game and they are liars for reason, ladies. Stay woke. Um, yeah, it's the weekend, so I'm excited. You guys have an amazing weekend. I will be back with you with more crazy stories and hopefully less crime and trash parents. You guys stay safe. Is it in yet? It's signing off. Toodles. <laughs>